Before you sit down, give the Lord just one round of applause. Glory be to God. And then you may please be seated. To God be all the glory. I'm aware many have joined us again in this second service virtually. So if you don't mind, please, can we appreciate the Lord for the virtual church? You are welcome, brethren, in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll continue in this series of our family life teachings. And just in case you're not aware, the month of October is devoted to family life. And we have been having series of teachings in our Bible studies, in our Sunday services. In fact, yesterday we have the marriage class. I'm believing God that there will be true revival in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, within our theme, the theme is Agape for the month of October. But within that theme, we'll be looking at the topic, Cracks in the Wall. Cracks in the Wall. Acts 18, 1 to 3. Acts 18, 1 to 3. The Lord has been helping us to study the book of Acts since the beginning of the year. And God has been truly faithful. So we'll take our text again also from the book of Acts, and this time it will be chapter 18, verses 1 to 3. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them so, because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and walked, for by occupation they were tent makers. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in the name of Jesus. I mean, last Sunday uh, I told you games that a winning team will not play. There are four of them. I also told you the game that the winning team will play. In fact, that's perhaps the only game they play in marriage. The living and the cleaving game is the only game of the winning team in marriage. To live and to cleave and becoming one. When trouble comes, they are in it together. Regardless of the source of the trouble, they don't play blame games. When one fails, they take joint responsibility and turn failure to success. That's the winning team in marriage. They play the living and the cleaving game. They never forget at any time that they are one and one team. In good times and bad times, the winning team are one in marriage. The living and the cleaving game is the secret of the amazing testimonies of Priscilla and Aquila, this wonderful couple in the early church. But may I say to you very honestly this morning that more often than not, before a building collapses, come some cracks in the wall. And before a marriage collapses, come some cracks in the wall of the marriage. Even the living and the cleaving, the winning team, the wall of that marriage will be challenged. The wall of that marriage will be confronted. And if care is not taken, you can then begin to see some cracks. This morning, the Lord wants to open our eyes on how cracks come up in the wall of any marriage and what we must do. See, according to main mark uh, leaders in advanced ground engineering, see, turning a blind eye to cracks in walls may mean you are missing the warning signs for serious and ongoing structural damage you know, caused by, you know, subsidence. Some cracks may not be as serious, but others can indicate a sinking or damaged foundation. If you don't address problematic cracks in walls, the damage to the foundations can quickly ruin the property, end of quote. These are professional engineers giving us the importance of paying attention to cracks in the walls of a building before it will collapse. The same thing in marriage. The cracks are always there, and sometimes we ignore them. So one day something happens, very small thing, 
And then the marriage collapses. Say, what happened over this month? You know, there have been cracks all this while. Ignored. On a daily basis, there are pressures on the cleaving walls of marriages to crack it open for a possible collapse. The first experience of cracking the walls of marriage was at the Garden of Eden in the marriage of brother Adam and sister Eve and the devil has not changed his tactics. The same tactics. So what cracks the walls of a cleaving marriage? Three principal you know, approaches of the enemy will always, if permitted, crack the walls and can bring down any marriage. Number one, who you have been listening to could begin the cracks in the wall of your marriage. In Genesis 3 verse 1, Genesis 3 verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, at God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden, who you have been listening to could begin the cracks in the wall of your marriage. The promises of God for your marriage and what the Lord has said concerning your marriage, life, situation and circumstance, even the life of your children, will be a subject of attack. Beware. The devil has never changed. Look, he came to this woman, Eve, and he said unto the woman, Yea, and God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Has God said anything concerning you? If yes, the enemy is coming after it. And you had better be careful. He did it to Jesus. In Matthew 3.17, follow me carefully. Matthew 3.17, after he had been baptized in Jordan by John the Baptist, God the Father came, the Spirit came as a dove, and the Father spoke. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That is the last verse in Matthew chapter 3. In Matthew chapter 4, the tempter came in verse 1. By the time you get to verse 3, Matthew 4, 3, just the following, the following chapter, after God said concerning Jesus, is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In verse 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, the same thing God had said, the truth of God concerning you will always be a reason the enemy will come. Say, command that these stones be made bread. Not for any other reason, but if, if truly, if you are the son of God, then command these stones to be made bread. The best of marriages will come under the attack of the devil in the form of conversation interrogation and imagination from the tempter. Who you have been listening to could begin the cracks in the wall of your marriage. The tempter can come as a voice in the head, for example, asking you, does your husband really love you as he claims? I mean, you are just there. Just, does your husband love you as he claims and said uh, he said so I mean a brother spoke to me some years ago he was so frustrated and what had happened he was coming home excitedly because the wife had, the wife had mentioned in the morning that I'm going to make you know some nice meal tonight forgot the exact, exact meal, but the meal that he loves. So he was coming home with excitement. As soon as he got home, he said, wow, where is my meal? I can't wait. The wife said, which meal? You are so insensitive. Ah. You mean you have not noticed the last three days that I have not been feeling well? Ah. I mean, give, give me my food. I'm not joking about what can, you said in the morning you are going to cook. I've been waiting to eat this food. Now I know. You don't love me. Ah. Where, what is love and the food you said is going to be ready? You are very insensitive. You are supposed to be a Christian. 
Your wife has been this tired these past three days. You can't even see it. See, that voice is still there. I, say, I told you in the morning. That's what exactly we do. The man went inside thinking it was a joke. came back. You mean this food is still not here? Food, my food. And eat the way. Ah. He fellow said, this is strange. What's going on here? And I went again to the, to the, to the room. And the lady just turned it back. And so, can we at least pray if I can't eat? If you like, pray. Now I know finally you don't really love me. But see, the conversation began in the morning. So, the brother said, Well, the following day, he said, well, Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, only I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't observe, you know, that you are really, really not feeling fine. Mm. So the fellow went to work this time. Coming from home, there was a restaurant in Nigeria called Tantalizer. <laughs> If you don't know it, don't worry. You've not missed much. But that was the real restaurant for the wife, the one that. So she stopped, he stopped by and bought other for the wife, other for himself. Some real meal, the one that the wife loves. This voice in the head had come in the morning. So you see, he will retaliate. That thing you did in the morning. This is why I will prove to you that he doesn't love you. Retaliate. Is he going to beat me? You wait. You wait and see. Now, somehow, the woman had married to cook something this time. Now the guy had called in the midday. That only how are you feeling now? Because he didn't want to be attacked of insensitivity. Say, how are you feeling now? Say, I'm there. I'm there means I'm still not feeling okay. So the guy came over and said, Wow, I got your best, your best meal. I stopped buying totalizer. Who sent you that today? Today that I cooked. Yesterday I didn't cook. You complain. Now today I cooked. See, I cooked today. I could. Now I know. I knew you are going to retaliate. Eh? So you now want to be eating outside. Okay. Make sure tomorrow you stop buying tantalizer and eat food in tantalizer. So at this point, this guy was now frustrated. Ah, what's going on here? The actions and innocent moves to demonstrate the love of a spouse can be turned to hate speech if you have been listening to the tempter. The tempter is always coming. He has no whether you're a man or woman, pastor or bishop. He will come and say something. Went to Eve. As the Lord said, you must not eat. What you already know to be true will be questioned by the tempter. And listening to him will crack the walls of your marriage. If the tempter, does he really love you? That's not a question to listen to. When you answer him, say, well, he said so. So, okay, we will prove it. This brother was very frustrated. He said, what can I do right? When I tried to correct this, then the goalpost had moved. And in that frustration, you begin to resent because I see life is too tough in this place. It's like you can't pass this exam. There's no way. The day you score 90%, you know, pass mark is 92. The day you score 92, pass mark is 100. The moment the tempter begins to whisper to you and you entertain listening, Comes an issue. Genesis 3 1 B, and he said unto the woman, Yea, and God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. In Matthew 4, verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. In another story, it was the tongue of the man. He said, Do you think your wife loves you and respects you more than any other man? As she claims. In that, in that story, the brother, the elder brother of this woman was visiting, had just arrived. The husband forgot completely that he was arriving that day. And so, in the afternoon, remember, I said, Does your wife really love and respect you? So this fellow came home. Do you know that 
Monday, Tuesday, food is a very important matter in, in marriage. I hope you know. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this woman had not, the man had been fixing things. Got home. This time there are all kind of meals. I said, today is a good day, we have meals. And as I was still trying to say thank you, my wife, somebody came down from upstairs. Oh, your brother is here. Wow. I forgot you said you are arriving today. You are welcome. Then the whisper came. See, this whole food that I couldn't prepare Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for the brother. He doesn't have respect for you. The following day, the lady went to the mall, put a call through, the brother picked, and said, my brother, what do you want in the mall? I said, oh, I forgot my shaving foam. Okay, I'll pick one for you. Can you give the phone to my husband? And then the husband picked the phone, not knowing that the wife had been trying to reach him, but the phone is in the bedroom, it's missed the call. Say, honey, is there something I can pick from the mall? Say, you see, you are afterthought. Can't even call you directly. It's from the brother's phone. So the guy was driving home. Now, reserve the front seat for the tempter. So what are you going to do now? She's not respecting you. Why do you want to show, show respect? Even the brother disrespect him. And then came home, cold. I only food is ready now. I'm sure it's for your brother. Yes, so it went away. Cracks in the wall. Who you have been listening to can be a crack in the wall of your marriage. Who you have been listening to, to could begin the cracks in the wall of your marriage. I told you three. Number two, if the tempter becomes your counselor, the wall of your marriage will crack. See, the tempter starts from the position of an interviewer asking you, did God say you cannot eat of this? Then he will graduate, he graduates to a counselor telling you what to do. In Genesis 3, four and five, Genesis three, four and five. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In other words, eat it. He began with a question. Now is a counselor. If I know your counselor, I can easily know whether or not you are already having cracks in the wall of your marriage. Like I said to you, he will go to anybody if he had gone to Christ. In the same Matthew 4, verse 3, Matthew 4, verse 3, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He's no longer asking Jesus, Are you the Son of God? Turn it to bread. He will start asking questions. But now he's now giving instruction, Bow down worship. If the tempter becomes your counselor, the wall of your marriage will crack. The tempter can start with counseling you to leave the bedroom for your spouse and then graduate to asking you to leave the house. A brother called me with a very painful and sad story. You know, the wife, and be careful which prayer line you join. They'll be very, very careful. So the wife have been joining this prayer line where they tell them everything going on in their lives, everything going on. They can mention their phone number and where they were born. And they, be careful. Somehow they convince her that the popularity of the husband is the fact that the husband has been using her glory. If you don't move away from him, the closer you are to him, the more of your glory he will use. I don't know how anybody on earth could fall for that. So she began by sharing a different room. The wife said, ah, what's going if I've offended you, let's sort it out. And we, you can't be in another room and the children are confused. So one day, they can't them. 
And now the council is saying, if you don't leave, you are going to die. So without telling the husband, took the, the children and left. Ah, and left a note. You have used enough of my glory. Left. The husband began to, ah, we are, what's going on? You can't do this. Let's talk about which glory. Which? So after, I can't remember now, maybe a week or two weeks, ah, the husband now said, I'm missing the children. I will go to, to the school to see them. I'm only letting you know. She didn't reply. By that evening, the police came to the church. This fellow is a pastor. And arrested, no, actually gave, served a uh, restraining order not to go any close. Okay. I think one day, they was driving in the, and saw the wife's car. Ah, that's her father. Thank God, Holy Spirit. I moved close. I was going to open the door to beg that what is it I've done? Let's resolve this issue. So the lady found her way out. I think the following day or that same night, police came to arrest him. And the lady had filed the suit that, you know, he really wants to kill her. And there are about, I can't remember how many counts charged, maybe 11 something as I'm speaking to you he's standing trial but the matter began with the tempter becoming your counselor he will start asking you questions he will graduate to instructing you he told Jesus what an audacity Say, bow down, worship me. I will give you the, all this glory that you see. Your trusted friend can be used as a tempter to counsel you. Matthew 16, verse 22. Matthew 16, 22 and 23. Then Peter took him, Jesus, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou sufferest not the things that be of God, but those be of men. Peter had just given a revelation that Jesus, you are the Son of God. Jesus testified. Flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but the Spirit. Few verses after, Jesus was explaining, I will go to the cross and die and rise again. And Satan came. You see, in Matthew 4, the Bible says he left him for a while. He came back this time through a trusted disciple. He said, be an obstruction on his way. Counsel him not to fulfill the purpose for which he came. But Jesus knew the difference between the voice of Peter and the voice of Satan. Sometimes your husband talking to you is not him. Your wife talking to you has been spending time with the tempter. Jesus said, he didn't say, Peter, get thee behind me. He said, Satan, get thee behind me. Your trusted friend can be used of the tempter to give you a counsel that can ruin your home. Be careful. Number three, the imaginations of your mind built up by the conversation with the tempter shall crack the walls of the marriage. See, the tempter will graduate from an interviewer to a counselor and ultimately a builder of imaginations. Where he's going is to build your mind, give you a mindset, a wrong mindset about your marriage. When your thoughts and imaginations of your marriage is built into a negative mindset, a collapse is coming. See, that's when you have been convinced, my husband does not love me. My wife does not have any respect for me. 
this marriage is not working. This is not marriage. I've entered one chance. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. He has so convinced you because now you are so sure. Many a times, these are false evidences appearing real. He paints it to you. He will tell you how your husband will speak that day. He will go to your husband and make sure he speaks that way. And it becomes real to you. Yeah, finally, I think I've married the wrong person. Because ultimately, for if Genesis 3, verse 6, Genesis 3, verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the food thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. It had become settled in her mind, convinced. A mindset has been formed. When he began with that question, does your husband love you? That's not where he's going. Where he's going is to build a stronghold, an imagination, a wrong imagination, a wrong conclusion of your marriage in your mind. So that when you wake up, that's how you see your marriage. And you can, your marriage cannot be better than how you see it. If you say this is not marriage, very soon it's not a marriage. It's as simple as that. If you say, oh, this marriage is not working. You, have, you, have, you say it off, it's, it's not going to work. Because that is the ultimate goal of the tempter. If he tempted the first marriage and he succeeded, why do you think it will change? The moment the tempter is allowed to become a builder of imaginations in your mind, and your mindset about your, about your spouse is polluted, you are cracking further the walls of the marriage, and very soon your heart will be stolen. And the heart of your spouse is told into. See, the moment you get to that conclusion, arrive at it that this is not marriage, without you knowing, a part of your heart is open. And somebody is coming in there, I promise. This, this, this is it. It, it, is the, it is the scheming of the enemy. He is a master at it. The moment you begin to resent your spouse, there is no vacuum. Someone will feel it. There are strange men and women looking for hearts to steal. The devil stole the heart of Eve by building imaginations in her heart. That's when you begin to see men who speak to you more gently than your husband. And say, these are men. And you, you will meet more women who appear to be more respectful than your wives. Hmm, these are wives. Once your mind is set that your husband is not good enough and that your wife is a mistake, the walls of your marriage are coming down. It's a matter of time. So I begin to close. How do I keep the walls of my marriage from cracking? Five quick points. Mind who you are listening to by the company you keep. Priscilla and Aquila spent more time with Paul and the brethren that the tempter didn't have much opportunity to penetrate. Mind who you are listening to by the company you keep and that includes the voice in your head. It may not be a human being that you see. You know, some people just, they, they can't think pure. Somebody, you've not met him before, say, this fellow looks like a crook. And they begin to, to relate with that fellow like he's a crook. Because there's something always telling them, informing them. You become suspicious of everyone. Priscilla and Aquila spend more time with Paul and the brethren that the tempter didn't have much opportunity to penetrate. Romans 16.3 Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. 
The more time you spend with God, you spend with God, I meant to say, you spend with God and in the things of God, the less time you have listening to the counsel of the tempter. Number two, when the tempter comes to question you about you, what you know to be right, don't grant the interview, dismiss him. Do you think your husband loves you? What kind of a question is that? Get out of here, Satan. There's a peace that will come to your mind. But when you begin to entertain that conversation, entertain that conversation, he will take it to the next level. After three, Jesus said, okay, no more. Get thee behind me, Satan. Many of us build the conversation. Number three, right? If you don't know what is written, you are written off. Let the tempter know that what is written is written and that's final. I, I, are you sure this marriage will last? What a question. Have you not read that it is written? In Matthew 4 verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hands, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil liveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Your husband does not love you. You divorce him. Your wife is a witch. Divorce her. What will you say it is written in Matthew 19, 16? Wherefore, there are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together? Let not man put us on that Satan, get out of here in the name of Jesus. But if you don't know what is written, you are written off. Number four. Be careful not to go the way of the spouse who has been listening to the devil and hired him as a counselor or a builder. This was the only problem of Adam. If Adam recognized that this woman has been listening to the devil, he wouldn't go the same, the same way, but he did. He went the same way. I don't have time today, maybe next Sunday. The transaction wasn't Adam, take, eat, and then Adam took and ate. Don't go the way, be careful not to go the way of the spouse who has been listening to the devil and hired him as a counselor or a builder. If your husband suddenly says, you lack respect, you don't have home training, my subordinate at work, they have PhD and you have only BSc, and yet you are so rude. That script was handed over to him by the tempter. Who has been canceling him? Don't join him and say, ah, PhD. Huh? All the, all, with all the PhD, look at yourself. The PhD, subordinate. Go and check what the real men are doing for their wives. Do you think you are a man? Do you need, any, do you need anybody to convince you you are a man? And so your wife says, oh, you think you are a man? Okay, I will prove to you that I'm a man. And when you go that way, the two of you will fall together. Do you know, when Eve ate the fruit, forbidden fruit, there was no trouble yet. It wasn't until Adam hated. Because if Adam said, oh, no, 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 oh, that's all right, honey, but hey, you will have been fine. Don't go the way of your spouse when the script that is coming out suggests that this fellow, I think he has been listening to some, to some tempter. Finally, I need to close. You must discern when your spouse has been listening to the tempter, counseled by the tempter, and when the tempter has succeeded in building a negative mindset in him or her, it is not always easy to accept, brethren, I must admit, that the tempter can so capture the mind of your spouse. It's difficult. This is my wife, the one that sings in the choir, or the one that is anointed. Oh no, the, the tempter cannot. No, the tempter can get anybody. Don't overrate her. Don't overrate him. Oh, he's a pastor. How, how, can, you, how can the tempter? The tempter went to Jesus. Jesus only escaped by sending him out. Eve was not a weak man. Eve named, I mean, rather, Adam wasn't a, a weak man. He named all the animals. 
But the wife said, eat, he ate. So when you think what this man is saying, I think he has been listening to him. Now when you get home and your husband goes off that way, don't say, I think you have been, you have been listening to the devil. No, that's a bad thing to say. Just know in your heart. And you do the final thing, number five. If the negative mindset is cast and the imaginations are all set, then warfare is the path to rebuilding a fallen wall of marriage. Second Corinthians 10, 4, 5, and 6, and I will close there. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to, to, have, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Warfare is the beginning of welfare in homes. Pray and fast at least once in a month for your spouse and your marriage if you can do once a week. If your wife's birthday is 10th of the month, you can pick a 10th of whatever month it is, like my wife is 10th of August. On the 10th, I mean, these are things spoken to me for myself. As I, get ready, as I was preparing for this, you can do yours. Uh, this is not a doctrine. But there is need to constantly pray for your spouse. Whenever the tempter comes to this woman, let her ears be blocked. Because the tempter will come. And if she listens, she will react to you. So 10th of August is our birthday. So on the 10th of November, <laughs> Oh Lord God of heaven and earth, whenever the tempter comes to this woman, let her not listen. And you can do weekly. You say, ah, I think my wife's own will be weekly. <laughs> Let us rise and pray. Glory be to God. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy. My Lord and my God, please have mercy. Have mercy on my life. Have mercy on my marriage. Have mercy on my wife. Have mercy on me. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Let's just take one prayer point. Just one prayer point because of time. We have more time to pray. You know, when we get to the conference weekend. Say, Father, please let me always enjoy your cover. Please don't leave me naked in Jesus' name. Don't leave my wife naked. Let me always enjoy your cover. My Lord and my God, don't leave me naked. Please let me always enjoy your cover. Cover me, cover me, extend the borders of thy mantle over me, for thou art my nearest kingsman. Cover me, cover me, cover me. If you listen to this message and you are not born again, oh, the life without Christ is full of crisis. The marriage without Christ will be full of crisis. And that's why I want you to please answer this call this morning. Just raise your hand up wherever you are. The ushers will put a paper in your hand. I won't even call you out. Or if you are joining virtual, just say, Lord, save my soul. Have mercy on me. I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. I confess them. I repent of them. I forsake my evil ways. Save my soul. If you pray that prayer, then you are saved. They will show you a number to contact us with on the screen. Please make sure you contact us so we can continue to pray for you. My Lord and my God, I thank you for your word. Father, please, let us enjoy your cover. Please, Lord, may we not be naked in the name of Jesus. In our homes and family, Father, let us enjoy divine cover. In the name of Jesus. I stand, O oh God, as your son. 
And any home where the enemy, the tempter is resident now. In the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Satan, I command you, get out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, help us, Lord. We need your help. Where Adam failed, let us succeed. Yeah. Where Eve failed, let us succeed. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Go ahead, give the Lord a big hand, and then you may be seated. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well.